Welcome back to the fate of Drakenheim. My name is Monty Martin, and this is the Dungeon Dudes weekly D&D 5e livestream campaign. I will be running our game tonight as Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, playing Wilhelm von Kessel, the human swashbuckler rogue. And we're joined today by our good friends. Jill Donitis, playing Rudy Whitaker, the shifter elder Knight. And Joel Gorman, playing Wrath, the Asimar warlock. Thank you for joining us once again. If you're just joining us for the first time, welcome. We're the Dungeon Dudes. Kelly and I post new videos on Tuesdays and Thursdays over on YouTube where we cover everything D&D and TTRPGs, including advice for players and guides for GMs, so be sure to catch that through the week. You can also join us on Tuesday evenings when we broadcast the campaign on Twitch. You can check us out from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube or check us out as an audio-only podcast as well. And with that, let us return to Drakenheim. Drakenheim is no more. The devastation which fell upon that accursed place left a kingdom in ruin. Now, horrors lurking in the haze grow ever more great and terrible, while simmering tensions between rival factions boil over into outright war. The power of monarchs, mages, and priests hangs in the balance. Six unlikely heroes join forces to confront the coming chaos. They shall decide once and for all the fate of Drakenheim. When last we left our heroes, they were delving deep into this strange temple complex seemingly dedicated to some sort of eldritch feline entity. I wonder who. <laughs> um, wrestling with the riddles, the puzzles, as well as the failed supplicants, warlocks of this eldritch being, our heroes have been exploring the complex and have now come into a square room where flickering flames in feline forms burn brightly in braziers in each of the four corners of this square room. Within the room is a great dais with a hole that leads down to a portal of, of dormant state. There are four pillars that rise above, the pillars decorated with the gaping mouths of cats devouring. The rest of the pillar is kind of made of like this um, amalgamation of rats flowing into the mouths of the cats that decorates the rest of the room. And of course, prominently placed in, in the room opposite the double doors is a great green cat face, its mouth agape into a pool of inky darkness. Two other doors lead into this chamber, one of which you've entered the chamber from. Because of the this, your sense of direction is somewhat thrown off, so it's hard to tell which way you've come in down here. And there's subtle remnants of gore moving from the portal. Yes, to there, the there, there's a clear arcane etchings across the floor around the dais, as if clawed out by a cat, but. All throughout the room are the ancient stains um, and signs of struggle and fighting that paint a picture of a struggle leading from the portal to the cat mouth. Well, I think, Wrath, being as knowledgeable as you are on cats in this temple, mm -hmm. um, Simply summon a creature from the well and feed it to the cat and we're good. I don't know what that's going to do, but that's the purpose of this room. You, you, you take a creature out of the well, feed it to the cat, and the cats are happy. Yes. Go ahead. I do not know what to bring. You, you there's ruins. There's runes, sorry, there's runes all around. Just read them. 
What does this one say? <clears throat> I want to... I bet it's something about cats. Cast. Um, uh, comprehend languages as a ritual. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and so it takes about 11 minutes. As I'm or, sorry, 10 minutes. It. Yeah. <laughs> Just listening to you whine about it. And then uh, I'm going to attempt to interpret the runes as I glide my hand mm. over them. Very well. As you interpret the runes, they are written in the ancient language known only to the cats that dwell on the moon's dark side. And they speak of the incantations to summon a creature. And in fact, the runes are consistent with those that could be used both for magic circles and for summoning circles. And what strikes you as most familiar as you comprehend the instructions that are written in these runes is it is anchoring a thin place mm -hmm. and allowing that act of summoning to be extraordinarily easy in this room um, potentially allowing controlled but greater creatures to come through here and so, because it is written in an arcane language, the purpose of the runes is described by this. So it's not necessarily written in that sort of coherent way that would tell a story. It is, that is the meaning behind these runes. I think that as an offering, we could try something fish like do you get to choose what comes out of the well i don't know i don't know i do not fully comprehend they have a double use likely to not only trap things but also summon them um but it does feel like a feeding area oh wow. Rule number 85, the quickest way to gain favor is with full stomachs. I mean, I agree on that for sure. Um, now, is this, we have to feed the mouth in order to, or do we need to come back and feed it once we figured out these riddles? The clearest sense that you gain from this, Rath, examining these rooms, is that they are very specifically written to bring out extra planar creatures of specific natures and types. The types that are most pleasing to Bruce. What you gather from this, though, is that this room provides but a meager appetizer before the ravenous hunger of Bruce. Oh. Oh. And the final element, though, that you determine it requires a human, not sacrifice, but spellcaster, to complete this magic. Like a conduit? More like bait. <laughs> that the entities... Of course. That, Why would I say conduit? That the entities that Bruce enjoys feeding upon 
are ones that delight themselves in preying upon humans. Rudy. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> you wanna go stand over, <laughs> go stand over there? You need me to stand somewhere. No, I, I must explain. I believe that we need to set a bait for whatever creature will come through this thin place. I believe that the portal is just shy of open. I believe that the door can open and close as it sees fit. We need to, if we are to complete this room, my understanding is we need to draw something through the door. It needs to want to come through. And to do so, we need a human spellcaster. Spellcaster you... as in being the, the bait? Y yes. I mean, rule number 75, Wrath. <laughs> Is? <laughs> oh, um, lead by example, not explanation. I am not entirely human, but... Neither is she. I guess I guess I could qualify though, right? It, Would I qualify? Humanoid. Can I look human in, enough? In in the world of Drakenheim, both Rudy and like both of you have ancestries that are mingled with magic. But that does not make the fact but that doesn't change the fact that you're fundamentally still like you're fundamentally regarded as human. Right? Your 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 bloodlines and your lineages okay. um, have been in entwined with the the magical things about you. And and yeah, you're you're still fundamentally human despite the you know, you have magical ancestry, but part of that ancestry is also that you're human. Mm. So Rudy, I want you to go stand in the middle of the <laughs> No, I'll do it. I, well, I, the question is, Wrath, if we're bringing something from another world, that's the idea here, how are we going to get them from that center to the mouth? Push it. Like physically push it? Or are you going to use your mind tricks to push it? I think it might take all of us. Whatever we have. Can I spend a few minutes using, like, rope to create, like, a trap on the ground that if the creature steps in it, I can like try to restrain it in the in, in the ropes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you want to spend a little bit of time that, as they're preparing to try to bind it with with some rope by tying them between the pillars, sure. And then uh, what I'll have you do is we'll have you make a check with thieves' tools, and that can be used as the opposed check to try to grapple it. Cool. Yeah. And what so. I, do we want to have it where I, as Big Rudy? have a rope that you make too, so I can pull him towards the Well, once, or... once he's in the trap, I'm hoping it's a trap that we can then move him with. Like, it's almost like, it, it like, you know how they make those little traps for like, if the bunny steps in it, it like, and then. That's like a snare? Yeah, like mm -hmm. a snare trap. And then we snare it, but like the other end of the rope is just around a pillar. And then we can like unlatch it and you can like haul it. And I mean, if you're using telekinesis, then together, we trap it, we snare it, yeah. we pull it, we telekinesis it, we try to get it into the mouth. As long as, you know, between the telekinesis and, and my strength that we can, it's depending on, I don't know how large this thing's going to be, so. It I'm could just, be a very tiny I'm, monster. But it could be strong, even though it's tiny. It could be a very large monster as well. Mm -hmm. I think we just be prepared on all fronts to mm -hmm. be able to try to, Push it slash drag it towards his mouth as soon as we can. I will keep my fingers crossed for a rabbit-sized monster. <laughs> really? Yeah. But but just make your your snare a little bit bigger than a rabbit. I will make it bigger than a rabbit, smaller than a house. <sighs> Somewhere. Like, find that middle sweet spot. In between rabbit and house. Got it. Um. I have enlarged for about a minute. So, okay. As long as we're big, prepared. Rudy's on the field. Are we ready before I? I uh, I guess. F as I sort of try to interpret the runes, do I gotta stand in the pit? You'll need to stand near the pit. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna stand on the edge of the pit. On the side facing okay. the mouth. 
Um, no, because that'll be in the way. I wanna, I wanna be um, up at the other side, across okay. from the uh, the mall. Should I be trying to do yeah. the opposite and body tackle from that side? Oh, do you want to push? Yeah, put. I'm just thinking. Jump momentum. across the momentum. <gasps> so we like bring it down, and then you are like run and like tackle <laughs> whatever it is. I feel like I'm over here with like my trap set. You have it. Yeah. Like, okay. And you can put and me where... to the beside. Yeah, maybe the other side, just know. so. Oh, oh. Uh, to to oh lure in the. Uh... Oh yeah, yeah. I'm even like I'm I'm like a few steps down, like ready to <laughs> ready to cast uh, enlarge on myself, and I'm like, all right, you just let me know when we're going. I'm go. I'm I'm ready. <laughs> okay. I've got my my rope to pull. Do we have a big Rudy? Do we have a big Rudy? We don't have a big Rudy. That's okay. That's okay. Um, we we know that she takes up a bigger space though. All right. All right, I think Rudy. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do oh, it. All we need is the voice. So that, that does it for me. I'm I'm there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wrath. As you draw on the power in the room and call upon this magical energy, the first thing that you notice is that there will be three stages. To this summoning. Okay? The first stage is to open the door. When you open the door, you will decide which realm you seek, what you wish to look for, and where you will make that connection. The second stage will be then to wherever you have opened the gate to pluck forth a creature from that place to draw it forward. And the final stage will be to close the door before anything else comes through. Okay. The ritual that you'll be encanting is effectively a powerful and unique version of the gate spell. So your concentration will be required until okay. the closing of the gate. Okay. This question. feels like a choose your if destructor. I, if I go through this thing, am I going into another realm? So do I need to pull this thing off? Or? It will be two way. Yes. Don't. It is. It is two way. So it, what I'm hearing is I need to be on the other side to pull it rather than a rugby tackle through yes. it. This will. This will be a two way gate. Okay, I'm gonna move myself. And now is the gate? I, I wanted. Yeah, I want to ask like, how does it work um, in the physical space? Is it take up the entirety of the cylinder? Is it at just at it the will, bottom? It will take up the entirety of the cylinder. Okay. And while there will be a spatial relationship, it will not be a direct correspondence. So there will not like, hopefully, but <laughs> you might have. It might be disorienting depending on how well you manage to control this. Okay. I'm no longer rugby tackling it, I am. Yeah, yeah. We, we start looking down the hole and it's like, really no. Then, then put me on the, can you put me a, a cross, across, from, across it? from it? I think yeah. that just, I mean, it's all about the LC fight. No, like, right, right. No, 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 I just yeah. had to. Yeah, sorry. I'm gonna move me a bit closer. Yeah, this mar marks the boundary of where the power is. And so, Wrath, if you f end up outside this boundary, the gate will close. If you and want, I can like strap you to one of the. <laughs> you pull me. And the back. final warning that I'll give you is that if it is not properly closed, there could be consequences. Okay, question then. We're gonna get a Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. Do I you? It. Then do you want me to make my mission less to get the monster in the mouth, or do you want me to hold you in the square? I think both. What do you mean? I can't pull. There's them. only one big room. I'll, okay, I've set the trap. Once I pull the trap closed, you're on pulling duty. I'll go protect. Rat. Can I? Can I just say though that like whatever is coming through that 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 hole from another dimension, I don't know if a rope is gonna cut it. <laughs> I, I, I'm starting to feel like the rope is just like. Listen. It's like it's like when you want to have the kid help you do something, and you're like you're. I don't know if that's helping. Maybe there's something else you can do. You have magic powers gifted to you by a cat. You can summon ores out of thin air. Rudy has a magic moon axe and can shoot fire from her hands. I have a crossbow, a sword, <laughs> and rope. 
What would you like me to do? I mean, hide behind that statue over there. <laughs> yeah, maybe you just wait till we're done, or I don't know. Like, no, no. I, I think there's more you can do. You do not understand the uh, the potency of my knot tying skills. I mean, to be fair, you are also heir to the throne of one of the most powerful nations on the continent. So we yeah, need but, to get near this door, all right? But does the creature from another dimension understand? Does, it, does this other creature recognize his his? No. If he comes out and I'm like, I am king, you will go in that mouth. Out of me. <laughs> so no, not relevant in this scenario. All I have is my rope, and I'm going to use it. Hold on, hold on. Raph, hold on. Right. stop insulting my rope. I've made an excellent trap. Raph, what's stronger, your telekinesis or my strength? Um, I, I believe I roll with my spell casting modifier, which is a, my proficiency plus my charisma, which is a plus 10. I mean, I also am very strong, probably equally as strong. I, I will have you know that this is hempen rope. <laughs> we're, we're trying, me and Rudy are like discussing the battle plan. <laughs> It is, out of a scale of 1 to 20, it, it is about a 17 in strength, okay? It's pretty uh, good. It's no, up there's... there. Maybe maybe that's your job, Wilhelm, is to make sure that I don't get knocked out of the... Yes, after I pull the trap closed. Tie some ropes around his ankles. Yeah, maybe you gotta tie me. Him. I just spent 10 minutes <laughs> designing this snare trap for the rabbit-sized creature that's coming out of this hole. Uh -oh. And we're spending it arguing about whether my trap's going to work or not. All right. No, it's not going to work. I'm gonna it is flip. going to work. I'm going to backflip this thing right behind me into the mouth. That's Suplex, the plan. yes. All right? Suplex it over. After I get a card in my go. rope. I'm ready. <laughs> Please. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. Give me a moment. The rope people got to you too, man. <laughs> this cost me one gold piece. It weighs 10 pounds. Can you, can you? I just imagine myself just being like, as big would be like, Arr, and the rope breaking. <laughs> yeah, I proved to him that the rope is not On good. the package, it said perfect for utility and exploration. <laughs> you gotta okay. get the one with the trap sitting. A thousand great, uses, right? one rope. Oh no. Okay, Rath, you begin to encamp the ritual. So I'm concentrating on a modified version of the gate spell. Yes. I stand before the pit amongst the cat gods. And I begin to draw the power while Wilhelm plays with the rope. <laughs> okay. I'm ready. Born ready. Now, this gate that you are about to open. <clears throat> we must As choose. you begin casting the spell, you feel the conflict between chaos and order, the resistance of reality to be rent apart in this manner against this great and terrible spell. The energy required to open up a gateway of this manner shoots through your body. Um, for it is indeed a spell that is beyond your own capability to cast it. Would you like to risk your body, your mind, or your spirit? The thing that is strongest is my mind. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so I will risk my mind. Okay, give me an intelligence saving throw. No, not that one! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> What's the other one? Spirit? Uh, I get a 13. Okay. As you call out. Really middle of the road there. Tear open the cosmos. <laughs> a backlash of work. energy reverberates through your body. And Rudy and Wilhelm, you see this flash of octarine lightning shoot through Rath. You can see a skeleton kind of, kind of <laughs> in. And, and light begins pouring out of his eyes, his ears, his nose, and his mouth. Uh, and Rath, you are going to suffer 
Um, 15 points of psychic damage. And as... And uh, this will bypass your class feature. Ah, darn it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, he got you. He got me. He got you with uh, the DM ruling. I was like, that's why I picked my mind. But turns out my mind is just the same as my body at this point. <laughs> so from now on, sacrificing the old uh, hands, <laughs> arms, legs. <laughs> they can all okay. go. Uh, now he's fine. You're all right. Drawing open the spell. You've cast the spell successfully. Nevertheless, by sacrificing a piece of your own psyche, represented by that psychic damage, to to open it up. Uh, I forgot how to make ores. Now, unfortunately, because of that, your grip on where you're opening this is going to be diminished, okay? So. It's my grasp against where I'm channeling yes. this gate. You gain, you have a sense of the different worlds that you can draw upon to pull a creature through. The dreamland, the space between worlds, the fairy realms, the abyss, the shadowlands. Tell me now, which two do you not want to open up? <clears throat> and which one do you most want to open up? Okay, I need to think back to with Bruce, Bruce enjoyed, I think he would enjoy things from the abyss. I think he would like that. I think he would enjoy things from the space between worlds because that's an enemy of his, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and you know what the fairy it was it the fairy lands the the fairy world the fairy worlds or the shadowlands so i think the shadowlands i'll admit because i think he eats fine on shadow so the i i i will den i will steer clear of the shadowlands and what was the first one dreamland the dreamland because i feel like he he gets a lot from there hey, well, what are the places i want to eat humans the most i mean the abyss so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna choose yeah. from I'm gonna allow the abyss, um, the space between worlds, and the fairy, the fairylands. Okay. And which one do you want the most? Which one do I want the most? I think as enemies of Bruce, I I have a feeling and and tell me if I'm wrong. The space between worlds. I think that's where Bruce's true enemies lie. It is. Tough. Give me an Arcana check. Uh, 26. Bruce might be himself a creature of the space between worlds. That's, oh, yeah, yeah. So maybe, maybe I want to admit that and truly pick Fairyland's Abyss. And you know what? He actually had a fun time in Dream World. Maybe he didn't get to eat enough. Okay. Drawing on the abyss, again, would you like to establish this connection with your body, your mind, or your spirit? <laughs> spirit. Give me a charisma saving throw. That's yes. the one. That's the one I needed. Uh, 26. Okay. I should have you spirit feel the connection time. to the abyss, and you see it in your mind. There it is, deep in the bowels of the abyss, the skittering and screeching domain of the rat god. <gasps> you feel the energy of that place as you encant the gateway to the realm of the ratlings. The, well, the realm of the Rattling's purported god. I think 
we have a few friends now. <laughs> I, was say. I mean, we don't. We don't. That's out of character. Um, I'm going to look for a nice, juicy, plump, and delicious rat. Prince. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. To, uh, Do we want this to be Zen, to, so? to To smell and to sense my presence. You behold a creature mutated and disgusting, a brood of them, six-legged rats, twice the size of, almost the size of a horse, feeding fat and suckling. You can feel in the back of your mind Bruce salivating. Uh, yes, this, this is the one. They are the target. There's a thunderous crack in the room as the bright red gate opens into the teeming warren of fiendish rat beasts. You see the massive creatures scurrying with their disgusting brown bodies upon their six legs. I call out to them. Come to me. The smell of man flesh fills their nostrils and they perk up, sniffing with their whiskers as their eyes light up at the scent of the mortal world. Roll for initiative. <clears throat> Rudy. 22. Rat? Uh, 18. Okay, Wilhelm. 18, I'll go after Rath. Okay. Uh, yeah, that makes sense, right? Do you wanna do? I feel like you're pulling things out. I gotta. <laughs> you gotta get your rope. <laughs> I gotta trap them with my hemp and rope. My strong, <laughs> capable rope. Rats can't chew the rope. You shut your mouth. We're gonna how, die. How dare you? We're gonna all gonna die. That's your fault, not my rope's fault. <laughs> I imagine you get one of the six legs and you're like, ha ha! <laughs> and it's like, it's like we, skittering up the wall. Stop making assumptions. This is going to go flawlessly. How dare you? Okay. No, but seriously, do we want them dead or alive? We want them alive until they're in the... And we want them to die by going into the mouth. By going. Yeah. Rats yeah. like okay. to... Ra um, cats like to... Play. Play. With their food. All right. Okay. The portal crackles with eldritch en energy, open to a space that could not, should not be. What do you do? How far are they in the portal? Roll a d6. Six. Okay, they are 30 feet away from where the portal is opened. Uh, and are they facing me, or is it like a door on both sides that they can go through? It's a door on both sides. Okay. Um, I would like to ready an action <clears throat> that when they get close enough to the door, and I want to like taunt them a little bit, be like, come and get us! Um, that I can like grab one of them and th try to throw them towards the portal, okay. if possible. <laughs> You see, it, that's all you're gonna do? Uh, yes. Okay. Suddenly, from back in the world, the war that you're looking through, you see another demonic figure emerge. It is a rat that almost looks skinned. It's, it's flesh stretched taut across its muscle, and it stands on its hind legs, lumbering forward with monstrous claws. A vile combination 
of gigantic rattling and demonic creature. It pile drives past the fat six-legged rats at the sight of the portal and bounds forward towards, uh, into this reality. And it races forward. Um, oh. <laughs> into on, it's all right. A Kinda. mauling sort of pounce as it emerges from the portal. Oh my gosh. Rat Prince? Is that you? Um, <clears throat> whatever it is, it is some sort of hellish rat demon. And as it does so, it lashes out at you, Rudy, with its claws, but this will trigger, if you want to attack it, yeah. you certainly can. Yeah, essentially, I just, I want to, if it's lashing out, I want to try to grab its whatever it's lashing out with, and pull it towards the opening. Okay. Um, do you have all your hit points? Not all, no. Okay, so it is advantage on its attack against you. Okay. Uh, um, do I have with strength checks and saving throws? So not necessarily attacks, right? No. Okay. Uh, is this just an unarmed attack? Yeah. Okay. 29, I think it's unarmed strike is t plus 10. Cool, so you go to grab it. It claws at you as you as you grab it, getting a 24 to hit. Ooh. Uh, dealing 11 slashing damage, and I need you to make a strength saving throw. Oh. But you will have advantage. Uh, 22. Okay, so you are not knocked prone. Um, as you reach out to grab it, we need to make opposed strength checks. Oh, uh... I got a crit, so it's 30. So you have grabbed onto it. You grab it, <laughs> and as you grab it, it just doesn't hesitate for a moment. It just opens its maw and bites you. Oh, oh. Um, Getting a 21 to hit. Yeah. Uh, um, can I? You cannot, because your ready to action is a, is a reaction. That's true, yeah. So you're gonna take 13 piercing damage, and as it bites into you, take 14 necrotic, and I need a constitution saving throw against contamination. <gasps> oh, it's contaminated. Uh, no. How dare it. You can do it, Rudy. 23. Okay, you do not gain a level of contamination. Oof. I feel like we're just like snarling at each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wrath, it is your turn. I attempt to close the gate. Okay. You've used your mind. You've used your spirit. Oh no. You must uh, now use your body. I throw my body at the mercy <laughs> of the portal. Okay. Let's try, to, let's try to close it. I attempt to close the gate. Okay. Give me a constitution saving throw. Uh, I got a six. All right. <laughs> You try to pull it using all the strength of your body, and it shudders, and you can't close it. <laughs> As the backlash happens, you take 27 necrotic damage, ah. but the portal is still open. Now, can that I half or no? It's necrotic. I can also half necrotic. Okay, yes, then, yeah, you can. Oh, thank yeah. God. <laughs> It's not closing for some reason. Not because of my inability, but it's just hard. Okay. It's really hard. Roll me a d6. Uh. Oh yeah, here we go. What's the worst that could happen? Hey. It's just a gate that's open. I got a four. <laughs> One of the other rat <laughs> beasts yours. comes running out the- The rope will help. The, the gate. <laughs> And it races <laughs> towards Wilhelm. Wilhelm is nothing. I guess Wilhelm's trap goes off. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right, we can make it a post grapple. Go go go. And I'm I add my proficiency to the dice yeah. roll. 
Because you're Thieves' Tools. Yeah, because I'm letting you do it with Thieves' Tools. That's going to be a 17. I get a 14. It is grabbed and <laughs> It like tangles up in the rope. And I, ha <laughs> ha! And, and, and it tangles up in the rope inches away as its maw just like snaps in front of your face. My rope is too powerful for you, vermin. <sighs> okay. <laughs> I did back everything I said about the room. <laughs> it's like it's like fallen over and latched on and I'm like holding it there. And as it snaps and lashes. It dwarf. Oh, its barbed tail extends unnaturally and swings around towards Wilhelm. Try to hit me now, vermin! Uh, it gets a 24. It hits me now, <laughs> vermin. <Okay. laughs> it's just right in the face. It grabs you around the leg. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And it... I need a strength saving throw. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. You can do it, you can do it. I have no luck points. Why? <laughs> what did you get? You got, you got zero. <laughs> zero. I got a zero. The tail lashes you and hurls you back through the portal. <laughs> <laughs> can he can he grab onto the rope? Can he like can he I try? was holding the rope. Can he try you were holding the rope? Okay, give me one more strength check to hold onto the rope. A strength like just a check? Yeah, this is strength, man. It's going to be a 7. No. You get uh, you get wicked rope burn though. <laughs> Am I, ah, it burns as, as I you're flung through the portal uh, into the hellish burrow beyond. Great. How far are in in is he? Uh, he was flung ten feet in and he lands prone. <clears throat> I look up Where, to um, um, a horde yeah. of rats coming towards me. Another one is going to go for you in in the realm beyond. Um, and, but fortunately, it is your turn. You are prone with a six-legged giant rat demon about to eat your face. Oh gosh. In hell. <laughs> One moment. <laughs> I need to assess he a few things. He just needs to consult his, uh, his rules. Use your action. Ugh. Okay. All right. Hmm. I'm 10 feet from the portal. Yeah. That's pretty close. As the rat lunges at me, I'm going to do the classic, you know when like the creature jumps at you and you put your sword up, hoping mm -hmm. that it lands on the sword and not you? So I'm going to attempt to stab the creature as its head comes down towards me. Okay. Do I have disadvantage because I'm prone? Yes. Unless you want to stand up from prone. I stand up from I mean, can we flavor yeah. it yeah. then? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Cool. Well then, I'm just gonna roll one. You back. stand up from prone in the process. Yes. Yeah. I crit. <laughs> All right. Yes. Um, that was cool. That was awesome. Yeah, so it's bearing down right for you, and you stand up, you lunge into it, and catch it right below the jaw. Yeah. Eighty-six damage. It's dead. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it, it's the classic. Like I land prone, I like have the wind knocked out of me a bit, and I look up just as it barrels down, and I manage to get my rapier out and jam it upwards as it comes down, and it's like face is right there, <laughs> as like uh, yeah, just like the trickle of the ichor and blood, just it it sinks down into the rapier, and you have to, like, push the cross uh, off you. I push it off, I stand up. And see that down the burrow are perhaps, like, a ton more of these things. Like, uh, dozens, hundreds, thousands? It sounds like there could be the hundreds, maybe thousands, from the, the roaring chittering that is coming. I bravely twirl my blade, place it back in, nod to the rest of the rats, and then I turn and I bonus action dash. <laughs> Back it through the portal? Back through the portal. And, and back to my corner. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> All right. So you just got flung through a portal into like rat hell. And then we're like, you just walked back out. Yeah. <laughs> After murdering with like With all this blood, you're like f like scraping blood. Like, up. it's only six, like, you just see me go, ah! And you're like, oh god, Wilhelm! And then, like, six seconds later, he's just covered in blood. And he's like, oh, oh god. Oh. I'm, just looking at him, I'm so proud of you, look. Oh, Rudy, it is your turn. Oh, it's stuff um, done. Okay, nice. so nice. I want to try to use all of what I can do to try to drag this guy towards this mouth portal. Okay. Um, is it athletics or yep. strength? Um, oh, I, I crit. <laughs> okay, so you can move your full speed. Move him my full speed? Mm-hmm. Oh. What do you, you wanted to like suplex it back. Yeah. Right? Okay. So, um, I'm going to say that you, you won the strength check, so you can definitely move him and, and shove it into the mouth. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so I just like I have him by his arm, and then I just like grab him by the okay. waist and like pull Give him. Give me one more strength check to, because basically I'm gonna say it's one check to move it, and then another to kick it into the mouth. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, that um, advantage. Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. Big Rudy. Big Rudy. Um. This okay. Is so good. Uh, 28. Okay. You kick the massive demon into the mouth, and there's a satisfied hum, like a purr, as it is devoured oh. by the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> the witch. <laughs> Do you remember the answer to the riddle from last time? Four. Three. One of the four flames flickers out in a satisfied puff of smoke. I understand. You have to leave it open. You have to leave it open! Okay. I know. Rudy keeps suplexing. <laughs> Keep going, Rudy. All right, so Rudy, that is your turn. Anything else? Uh, I would like to uh, use my Bonus action to shift. Okay. Can, can I shift while I'm enlarged? Yeah, why not? Okay. Yeah. I get 17 temporary hit points and I. Ooh! Just tell me what I need to do, Wrath! Okay. Three more. Are you now like a giant wolf lady? Yep. Nice. Yep. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Get the other one. Wrath, it is your turn. Yeah. Portal is held open. Um, what if you simply want to hold the portal open? It will only cost your bonus action. Do, does it require also concentration? Yes. Okay, I will uh, continue to hold it open, um, and um, I'm going to. However. Each time you hold the portal open, you can try to coax a creature out of it. As part of my bonus action? Yes. Okay, I want to try then to coax a creature into the middle. I want to taunt okay. the closest creature with my mind. An imposed charisma check. Uh, I get a, oh yeah, like a, uh, just charisma or with proficiency? Just with charisma. Uh, 24. All right. Essentially what you're able to do is by invoking your will over the portal, you are able to move the opening of the portal in the other world such that it shunts another creature through. Oh, perfect. However, roll me a d6. I might not get to choose. I roll a six. So unfortunately, or unfortunately. maybe fortunately, as as, as it is, um, can I bring it? Yeah. Why you do I... end up bringing two creatures through. Oh. <laughs> another one of good. the rat demons, and another one of the other rats. Now close it. One at a time. One at a time. Okay, then. Uh, yeah. At this point, right if there's three in the room. Uh, I'm going to attempt to close the okay. portal. 
You've used your body, mind, and spirit once each already, so you may choose which you would like to use this time. I'm gonna go for spirit. Okay, give me that charisma saving throw. Come on, Rath. Uh, 18. You draw on your spirit to try to close the portal. It's barely, it's mighty, it's great. But you pull it. Oh! <laughs> the portal is closed. Now help, <laughs> please. Use the rope. It works okay. so well. Wilhelm, it is your turn. Um, I'm going to running. Grabbing the rope that this guy's tangled up in, I want to like run and pull him. Based, um, I want to pull him towards Rudy. Okay, in in the ropes. Since you're using the rope and you can leverage them, give me a check with your thieves tools. Don't because you're proficient. Don't you? doesn't it do the ten? Yeah, you add your proficiency bonus. Yeah, which yeah. is plus five. Yeah. So that's gonna be nine. But is it is that is that one of the things that you can do? You add your dexterity talent? and your proficiency oh, and yeah. It, dexterity and yeah. okay. Fourteen. Okay, so I've been, I I win the opposed strength check, so unfortunately you don't move. <clears throat> I run, I start trying to pull, and I hand the rope to Ruby. Basically as long as as long as long as it's in the ropes, I'll let you use your bonus with these tools in place of your strength or dexterity to try to pull it as if you were grappling it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. It's the levers and pulleys. Yeah. It's the I, knots. I hand you the rope and I'm like, Rudy, throw it in. Okay. Oh! So this rat I'm gonna count as restrained. So it's stuck in place, so it can't move. But the others can. So the this rat even is gonna come up to Wilhelm. Mm -hmm. And this one's gonna snake around ah. behind Wrath. Okay. Uh oh. So, Wrath, I got a claw and a bite on you. Okay. So that's going to be a 12 and a 16 to hit. 16 hits. The bite, it snakes up around and it bites you in the back, like just ah! like in the side, the flank of your body. <laughs> You're going to take 10 piercing damage and 18 necrotic damage. And I'm going to need a constitution saving throw. Uh, okay, and, and I'm assuming this is so I don't get contaminated. Uh, I got a 23. You do not gain a level of contamination. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm my lucky. big friend the rat demon's gonna come up to Wilhelm. Hi. Uh, and I get two 25s to hit. <laughs> I cast shield. I don't have shield. I don't so that's gonna be oh, no. two hits, one for se both for seven piercing damage. And then one for nine extra necrotic and one for 18 extra necrotic. And I need one constitution saving throw versus contamination. One constitution saving Yes, because yeah. just the bite contaminates. The claws don't. Uh, that's going to be uh, 26. You do not gain a level of contamination. <gasps> Resilient oh. constitution was a good choice. Yep. 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 It was. And the other rat is restrained, but it does have its tail which is going to lash out towards Rudy. Here you go, Rudy. <laughs> Getting a 14 to hit. No. Okay. Okay. That is all for the rats. We go up to the top of the round with Rudy. All right, so I have the rope. Yeah. And I can use the rope to yep, pull. Yeah, to pull. Yep, all right. with the strength. With strength or athletics. Opposed. Strength. Um, check. Yeah. Yeah, use your action and make, and it's just like you're grappling, but with the rope. Let's do it. Oh! Uh, 30. <laughs> okay, I get an 8. <laughs> so you pull it towards you. That'll be your action for the turn. Okay. Um, can I... I want to use... Ooh, actually, no, I don't. I don't want to bite it. Um, <laughs> I think that's it for now. Okay. So. Wrath, we're over to you, buddy. So this thing just bit me. Yeah. Um, I am going to cast, uh, I because now I don't have to concentrate on the gate. The gate is closed. Um, I'm looking for a confirmation. Uh, the gate's closed? The gate is closed. Yes, okay, thank gosh. 
I'm gonna cast Telekinesis, and I'm going to try to grab the... I'm gonna try to grab the rat that Rudy has right beside her and push it into... Okay, oppose strength with Telekinesis. Uh, I get a 24. I get a six. I gotta stop rolling. You're, <laughs> you're jail. falling out there. Nice jail. Yeah. You pick it up, throw it through the, the, the mouth of Bruce, and uh, once again, there is a satisfied <laughs> slurping noise as one of the flames go out in a puff of satiation. Two more! Two more! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about your rope. <laughs> it's okay, but it served its purpose. Uh, and that is my turn. Okay, Wilhelm, we're over to you, buddy. Um, I don't think I'm gonna move this thing, so... I'm going to attempt to... This is, this is bending rules a bit, so I'm gonna ask. If I attack it with the intention of wounding, like, a leg or something to make it less easier to grab or pick up or something, could I attack it with that intention? Sure, if you hit it, you can give up your sneak attack damage to effectively help. Like, I'll let you trade your sneak attack damage to help. Oh, like help action? Contrary, yeah. I could just take the help, uh, the help action. Correct, yes. And help. flavor it. Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that, that, yeah. that makes more mechanics. So, sure. I'm going to use my action. I mean, the trick was that by attacking it, I'm able to move away from it without provoking an opportunity attack. But yeah, I, I'm going to use the help action and basically nice. stab it in the leg to try to like limp okay. it a bit. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm going to try to like, because it's not an attack, I can't move away from it. Yeah, but you can disengage. I, 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 oh yeah, I disengage yeah. as my bonus action and then shimmy around to the other side of Rudy. Like we kind of switch. Yeah, switch. I like stab it in the leg and then we like shoulder, <laughs> shoulder, and I like, we, and now it's, okay. now you're facing it. The rats. All right. This guy is going to come and, gonna con and, and Perfect. it's <laughs> going to go right up to Rudy and attack twice, uh, getting a... 28 oh, yeah. and 7 to hit. So the bite hits, and that's going to be 18 piercing damage and another 18 necrotic damage, and I need to save against contamination. And then there's going to be two more on uh, Wrath. we yep. got a 12 and a 24. Uh, the 24 definitely hits. 17? Does save against <sighs> contamination. So, so again, the bite does hit. So ah. that's going to be seven piercing damage plus another 18 necrotic, and I need a con save against contamination. Okay, first con save against contamination is I get a 15. Just enough. <laughs> Just enough. <laughs> okay, top of the round with Big Rudy. You have okay. advantage. And you I made my. Uh, I'm gonna give it disadvantage. Oh, okay. Yeah. I made um, my con save on uh, telekinesis. Great. I'm kind of like. Did you need to make your concentration check I for big Rudyism? Uh, big Rudyism. Big Rudyism. <laughs> what do I need to? Uh, it would be one. It would be one check for um, DC 18. Uh, for strength. Or for constitution. Done. Oh, uh... For concentration. On, ba on no, Big Rudy. I didn't. DC 80, yes. I no. shrink down! Oh, no, no! I'm still wolfish. <laughs> okay, but we still have the disadvantage for it on yep. its strength check. Yes. So I would like to... I'm kind of in front of the mouth. Mm -hmm. I've shrunk down and I still look up with, like, determined eyes. I'm gonna misty step behind it. Teleports behind you. Push oh. it into the mouth. Nothing personal, kid. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Opposed strength. strength. I disadvantage. 29. I have a 13. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> That's so, you shrink down and just like, boop, boop, boop. Like, oh, yes, yes. Oh, man. I love this. Okay. Over to Wrath. I turn around and I'm gonna attempt to grab this creature mm -hmm. and just launch it over me into the maw. Alrighty. And Ooh, I I get a twenty-two. I only get a thirteen. 
So you try to telekinetically grab it, but it resists it and it plants down. Uh, and instead, uh, we're gonna go to Wilhelm because it's gonna be attacking you very shortly. <laughs> <laughs> I try to grab it and it didn't work. Help! Uh, help! Oh god! Oh god! No. <laughs> <laughs> Rocks fall, everyone dies. I can't, I hit everything. Oh god. As you panic, you're like a bull in a china shop. Like as you hit one thing, you're like, oh no, oh no. Okay, okay. I run over, okay. I run, I run over, and I'd like to help Wrath. Okay. Or Rudy, I'm just gonna use the help action. Again, I run over and I do like a little stab in the leg. Then I disengage and move back. Well, the big rat's gonna come for Wrath one last time. Yep. Wrath, get it. Getting a natural one with a bite and a 15 at the claw. The 15 misses. All right. Because I stabbed it in the leg. Yeah. Uh, that did it. We're over to Rudy. Um, How far away am I? Can I use the... You also got the squares. So You're like 30 feet away. 30 feet. Okay, so in the meantime, while I'm working my way over to it, I am going to cast Enlarge again. <laughs> uh, so I'm just like, like Mario. Yeah, up and down. <laughs> grow and shrink and grow, grow and shrink. So I get in position to get this thing's attention, and I'm like, Big Rudy's coming for you! And that's it. Okay. <laughs> do, 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 do. Wrath. Uh, you have advantage now. I'm gonna try to, yeah, throw it in again. So do I get advantage or does it get disadvantage? Uh, what do you want? I want Wrath to have advantage. Okay, I'll roll the, the double dice and I'm gonna get a 20. Whoop! <laughs> <laughs> and I like to imagine I do like, just like throw it over my, me as I, as I lay down on the steps. All right, and with that, the last light goes out. A satisfied purr fills the room. Well done. Thank you both. That was amazing. I went to rat hell. <laughs> <laughs> I was so concerned. I I'm, killed one. I'm I I didn't know what we would do if we had lost you in the in that realm. I mean you'd probably need to go get Sebastian and come and get me. I don't know if, uh, yeah, if you could survive, that was... I would survive. You can. Also, Rath. I was really worried. I accept your apology. Yes, the, I absolutely underestimated the rope completely. It, it was... was very well-timed and I will consider it in any future times. You are not someone who should be underestimated. Thank you. I need a new rope now. My other rope went into I the reach mouth. into my robe of useful items and I pull out rope. Thank you, Ralph. <laughs> Thank you. It is a gift. I'm just really glad it saved you from getting mauled in the face. It's 50 Plus. feet. Is it hempen? <laughs> What's, what's the higher quality than hempen? Tis. <laughs> Lovely. Tis hempen. It looks just like my old rope. <laughs> this is amazing. Now. It, now that we've started out the rope issue. <laughs> I can't. Wrath. I must commend you. Give credit where credit is due. Opening a portal to the rats, it stands to reason that the cat lords are probably mortal enemies of the rat god. Hmm. The ratlings, the cats, I feel like there's something going on there, but that was an excellent choice. It was not necessarily my choice, it was what I have... It was a sense uh, from Bruce. He he has particular tastes, and 
I can tell that the abyss is a place that he found very, was very fond of um, from a hunger standpoint. However, uh, I did not know what to expect when that portal opened. But it is something to consider as we move forward. It could end up being um, important, especially this place. Well, important to Drakenheim too. I, you know, we've come across a few things with Ratlins. And yes. I don't think it's a coincidence that you know we we're seeing a lot of this imagery and and indication that the rats are enemies of Bruce and and in recent years the rise of the ratlings mm. and now if Bruce is an entity older than time if Bruce was the creature that the first warlocks made a pact with. There's something to be said for the fact that Bruce is acting now more than he ever has in the past. Why? You never heard of cats being, you know, rulers or ru ruled or... It's, it's no coincidence that this is surfacing now. It's surfacing now because, I mean, at the same time, the rats are out of control. With the rats out of control, the cats have come to feed. The balance is tipped. I believe there is a, an opportunity for, for us to leverage this imbalance and use Bruce, for he is hungry and his, his needs are his needs have been cast aside. As we have seen in the depictions, we are, we are at best, our unity is when we work with him. And you, I hope you understand that I can be a voice, a guidance for him. Oh, Wilhelm, didn't you say in your story that you were saying before we went through here about them helping the humans? They helped the humans to survive the endless winter. Mm. It had an end, but generally the endless winter. They said there would be a debt to pay. We don't yet know what that debt was. It was never really confirmed, but humans owe those they made a pact with a great debt. So Bruce, if he is that entity, is going to ask for something. Mm. And you should never mess with things beyond your comprehension. And for all that Bruce has given you, I'm still hesitant. I mean, you'd have to be an, you'd have to be an idiot to trust some sort of creature from beyond mortal comprehension to be your ally. Sorry, I just stopped listening. That's okay. <laughs> It's actually interesting, I was referring to Sebastian and his trust of the Ratlings early on, but uh, oh. turns out it applies to you too. Um, <clears throat> the important thing is, is that we have a better understanding of this cosmic imbalance. Mm. And I, I truly believe that in that, in that, uh, that extra space, there is no good or evil. There are only what exists. If our goal is to try to help Drakenheim, destroy the Delirium Heart, get rid of Delirium, there's going to be a lot of rattlings in the way. If Bruce could be used to help clear out the rattlings, again, it's not a good idea, but it's an idea. I would just change the uh, the wording. Bruce cannot be used. I would invite you to, th to think of it as when you have a rat problem. You hire, you get a cat. You bring the cats. 
And I believe if we bring Bruce properly to Drakenheim, which hmm. I have begun to do already, I believe there is an opportunity oh. that he he will be satiated. It's a shame we sealed that uh, portal in the throne room shut completely. Well, I think other things were being potentially let in there too. Yes. And as, as they say that, I shrink down, Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> now we have one last room. Well, no, I don't know that. There's lots of doors. Um, we have another room that we never checked. But which way should we go? Well, I mean, what was the the riddles that we came across? Halfway and... The four corners. Three? The four corners. Four and corners, but how many cats did they see? The answer was three. Yes. They each saw three. So... Halfway, three. The original riddle was... Uh, the previous riddle was how many cats were in the room. Oh, yes. How many cats were in the room? And the answer was, was four. four. There were four cats, each sitting in the corner of the room. Three cats at... How many... That riddle, though, we solved by diffusing all of the lights in the cats? room. four, yeah. The halfway, I still haven't... Because we had to feed all the cats. I still haven't worked out its purpose. Um... Hmm. And then when we originally entered the doorway to complete this journey, we must understand the very first riddle. Exactly. Uh, Three cats. Perhaps we should listen to what the keeper said. The riddle... I have some ideas, but to put it together completely, I think we should keep going. Agree. All right. Okay. Which door will you take? You see the double doors, but also the singular door opposite. Also, should we rest? Yes, a short rest. <clears throat> a short rest? Yeah, yeah, you guys can take a short rest. Uh, yeah, you all take a short rest, recover some hit dice. I get a lot back. Good. Good. Get your action surge back, get yeah. your spell slots back. I don't get my luck points. I don't get points. maybe spell slots back. Get some healing. Good stuff. I need my spells. The double doors or the door that we didn't Use. The door opposite. The door opposite the one we came in. So far, in terms of doors and taps that we've seen, we entered through two doubles, but we have been since going through singles. Yes. Could the double doors potentially lead us back to the beginning, which is where we do or do not want to go? I mean, we could try the double doors and see where it takes us, and if it takes us back to where we were, mm -hmm. then... At least we'll have a sense of direction. Mm -hmm. Or we try the single door. What was the door that was unlocked? Was it was it the same as the yeah. halfway? Yeah. I would vote for the door that unlocked. The one that the opposite. Open. The opposite. Okay. Um, as we were able to defeat the opening the door on the opposite side of the room. You see the murals here. And on this door, depict a river. A river of rats. Good. Wrath after you. I continue forward. Okay. You open the door into a strange chamber. A pool of bubbling, swirling octarine energy fills this room. And several bridges are built across it. Um, extending from one side of the room to the other, where you see a lower level where there is another door depicting the image of a river. Before you, as you enter the room, is a dais. And upon the dais are three small statues made of a silvery green material resonating with an arcane energy. The three statues sit in the dais, which has the shape, not unlike that, of a boat. And the three statues depict a rat, a cat, and a dog. And 
as you enter the room, you feel, feel Bruce in your mind. A cat sniffs some catnip across the far side of the river and managed to cross the river without getting wet, but using no bridge or no boat. How is this possible? Was able to get to the far side of the river. In the room, there is a matching dais on the opposite side that also has three divots shaped like the statue's bases. Are we coming in here? Yes, on that side. I mean, my initial thought was that the river was really small and he just jumped across it. Like, what do you classify as a river? It could be like two feet wide and then he just like hopped across. That it's like most uh, thin point. River is the name of your sister. <laughs> Might be something there. Good, good. Keep exploring. I don't think the people who built this room knew his sister. Hmm. Interesting, Valid point, interesting, Rudy. interesting. I'll add it to the to the ponder. No, no bad ideas in brainstorming, nope, right? Never, 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 never. Because uh, we've actually learned a lot. Like that rope worked too well. So I'm up for whatever you say right now. I'm, I'm in awe. Can I? Okay, can I walk up to the one of the statues? The one in front of us is the cat. The, the, all three statues are on the dais together. Okay. There is a rat, a cat, and a dog. How big are the statues? Enough that you could hold. Um, they're almost life size. Okay. Right. So the the so it's a sitting cat, a sitting dog, and a sitting rat, and the cat is about the statue of the cat is about the size of a house cat. The dog is a not a large dog, but enough that you could pick it up. It's a corgi. Not a, bigger than a corgi. Medium-sized town. It's a yes, corgi in my mind hound. now. Okay. You can't change that. Okay. And then the rat is rat-sized. Um, I, can I lift up the statue? Yes, the statues do lift up. Ah. You see, the puzzle's simple. You, 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 you have to put them on the other side in the right order for some reason. Okay. Now I heard a riddle like this once, but it's a completely different riddle and nothing like this. Okay. It involved a fox crossing a river. To make sure it doesn't eat it. To make sure it doesn't eat the thing. I know the But they could use a boat, couldn't they, in that riddle? No. No. Don't they ride on top of? <gasps> the dog, yeah. The I've dog. heard that. You know I'm it. pretty sure I told you that. Riddle. It was it was in your bar. Yeah. What was the riddle? The, the riddle is that the they want the food over the other side, but if he takes the rat and leaves him or something, then he eats the food or chick. There's chickens and. I think, I think it's a similar riddle. We need to take the statue. The chicken would eat chicken feed, and the fox would eat the chicken. And there's catnip on the other side. The cat wants to get to. But if the cat... No, that's not what the riddle is, though. It's just how does the cat get to the other side with... The cat needs to get to the other to side with... a dog with... or a rat. But... That's true. It's just about how the cat got to the other side. Yeah, how so... did it get there without getting wet? You're confusing your riddles. <laughs> so it's not the same at all. Could it, could it ride on top of the dog? Is there a dog? But would the, the dog not there eat was the cat? Oh, wait, yeah, there's no dog. In the riddle, there's just a cat and catnip in a river. But there is something about the fact that Can't the dog wet. will eat the cat, the cat will eat the rat. But we don't care if the cat eats the rat. That's completely irrelevant to whether the cat makes it to the other side of the river or not. But also, the, I think in the riddle and in the statues, the, the statues aren't in the riddle and vice versa. Exactly. That's what I think Rudy was saying. I was getting... But like we need to carry them over and put them in the right order. I still think that there's something to do with putting these statues over there in the right order. On the other side. But you're right, it doesn't... Have to do with the riddle. It doesn't have to do, like, what do the dog and the rat have to do? 
Is there any signage around? <laughs> There's no is signage. There any, is there like, any instruction? If I look underneath the statue, is there a hint? Is it like upside down written the answer <laughs> in backwards? No. Nothing pertaining to like in terms of uh, a dog and a rat. Nothing. Okay. In my vast knowledge of catnip. <laughs> <laughs> what's your? What's your? Uh, <laughs> what's? Are a dog and a rat also likely to eat catnip? You know. So I say we just toss the cat statue across the river. <laughs> and it's solved. No, we carry it. We must carry it and it cannot get wet. Okay. Hold what do the on. dog and the rat have to do with no, this? Hold on. They're uh, the they're red herrings. Another animal. No, they're a dog and a rat. They're not herrings at all. Is this do we know? Uh, what room, where this connects? The river on the door makes me believe that somehow, I mean, it doesn't make any spa any logical sense spatially, but this is probably the river room down the enemy hallway. If I'm making a guess. Again, I'm making assumptions based on the fact that we're in some sort of quantum cat realm. Cat sniff the catnip. Wants on the to far get side of the river. On the far side of the river. Can't without using a bridge or a, or. What can I get the exact wording again? A cat sniffs some catnip across the far side of a river, but managed to cross the river without getting wet and without using a bridge or a boat. How is this possible? The cat was carried. There, we just take the cat statue and carry it. I mean, the question is, is this cat like your cat or is it a regular cat? Yeah, I was gonna say. Your cat can fly, yeah, so. Yeah, can fly. Um, I'm gonna go over here to try to take a closer look at like the, the place where the <laughs> statues go. Do they go in the door? Oh, no. Okay. So this is the altar on that side. Right, so you've got that altar there and that altar there. The three statues are on this altar. Uh, taking a closer look at the altar, there's a space for all three statues? On the opposite side, yes. Any iconography on the, on the pedestal? Or... Um, again, it somewhat resembles a boat. And the etchings here show a man, a human, with the three creatures. And that is all. So the etching on this altar, it shows the ma a man with a cat, a dog, and a rat, and a boat. There's a river. And the man is looking like they want to get to the other side of the river and bring their animals with them. What if we each carry a different statue and just place it in the altar and see what happens? It just depends on whether, if this altar looks like a boat, can all three be in the boat at the same time? I also feel like something bad could happen if we place them in the wrong order, or perhaps if all three are removed. But again, we won't know unless we try. Mm -hmm. So who do you think, what, what, what statue should go first? Well, I, I if, have a feeling that all three need to make it over. All three need to make it over, but you can't, if this is similar to the one with the fox, you can't leave the cat with the rat. You can't leave the dog with the cat. Yeah. But the dog and the rat, the dog and the, the dog and the rat. Because maybe you can, can only be move together. one at a time. Can you only move one at a time? Perhaps if we only move one at a time, then we take the cat over there. Mm -hmm. Then we come back, and we get the dog. The dog. And bring it over there, but then we take bring the cat, the cat back. back. But then, and then when we come back, we drop the cat off, take the rat. Yes. Yeah. And then move the cat over. Yeah. And then move the cat over. 
That would be a order not to leave him if we can only take one at a time, I'm assuming. Let's try. I would rather not set off the trap and this, if it's a puzzle, that seems like a logical answer to the puzzle. Do we play, uh, if, we're, if, that, if that's a logical way to do this, do we want to um, have runners between each other? I, I think I vote that Wilhelm. I'm the I, fastest. I, you're, you're, I saw you fly into a portal and f walk out. You also fly though. I know I can fly, but I feel like you can run faster than I can fly. I'll, I'll be fine. I can do this. I can, can also have a straight way across. Though? I can make this jump. Can you? Yes. No problem. All right. Do you want me? And to I play? can also fly. There and... are the slopes down the side. The ramps. But they don't attach. You have to Correct. Little jump, jump. Yeah. It's a tank. But I can. Jump. My flying can help. But I think. Your oh yeah, I also have, I have slippers of spider climb. Yeah. We could also like ferry it, like you could ferry it back to me and I could fly it down and then fly back up or something. I mean... But I think you can make the jump. And that's what I mean, if like one of us is down there and one of us is in the middle, one of us is here, we can kind of pass them back and forth, potentially, if, if that's... Was there a key now when it says that they can't use a bridge or a boat? Can we use a, the bridges? Because we're not them. They can't use a bridge or a boat, but we're carrying them. I can't... think they're separate riddles. Wait. Okay. Is, do we want the cat on the boat? Because he said there is no boat. He doesn't use a boat in the riddle. So bring the, the rat over first. But if we bring the rat over first, we leave the cat and the yeah. dog. Yeah, I think, I think... I think the first way is the way to do it, but I don't know. You're right. I, I, but I think the the riddles are sort of separated because I think we have to solve the room and then we have to use the riddle to solve the. Greater. I guess the question is, do we make sure that the dog and the cat get to the, or dog and the rat get to the boat first, or not first, but like they end up there and the cat doesn't? I don't know. Yeah, that's why I liked. When I get over there, if there is catnip in the boat, I will bring it to the cat. I also just have a feeling from the other rooms we've been in that once we start this process, something will happen. No. You two keep whatever it is that happens off of me. Oh, okay. Right. And I will deliver the statues to the other side. Okay. 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 How will you begin? I come over and I pick up the cat statue. Okay, as you pick up the cat statue, you feel the warmth of the cat and you kind of get, kind of hear it purring. This is a good sign. Uh, I start to walk across the bridge. Does anything change? You hear a little bit of a squeak and a gurring from the dog statue and the rat statue, but they seem to be okay. Uh, just to not jump. I'm going to walk and walk along the wall. Okay. Roll a d6. Three. Okay. You jump across, you leap across, <clears throat> you come to the other altar. I place the cat statue in the center of the altar. Okay. As you place the cat statue on the altar, the two braziers on the opposite side, burning with flames, there is a whoosh, and the flames go down. You feel the temperature of the room get lower. Does that mean I did something right or wrong? I don't know. Time will tell. How how much lower does it get? You notice it get cooler. Let it let us continue. I'm gonna come back and take the the dog. The dog next. Dog. Okay. I pick yeah. up the dog. You pick the dog up and. You hear, hear in your mind that happy sort of. <laughs> Do we all hear it, or just, just every... Wilhelm? Oh. I take the other path and walk along the wall. Okay. So you get close. You hear the dog growling at the cat, and you can hear the <laughs> the cat at, yelling at the dog. I place the dog down and pick the cat up. Cat starts purring. The dog's just. <laughs> I walk back. To the other, place the cat down, pick the rat up. Okay. The rat squeaks joyfully. 
as the cat. You hear the sound of cat a cat licking its chops. Like <laughs> <laughs> the cat wants it. I come back. Okay. Placing the rat and the dog, you feel the temperature drop precipitously. Keep going. Well, uh, I'm I'm going to be standing in the middle. Okay. I come back. Or are you standing right I'm going to stay there. Okay. Yeah. And I'm going to pick up the cat statue. Okay. It purrs. Going to come back and place the cat in the middle. Okay. You place the cat in the middle. There is a rumbling sound. Loud rumbling and a shaking as the braziers go out and the room goes completely dark. Okay. Uh The room goes completely dark. I can't see. I can. (laughs) It gets freezing cold. Ridiculously cold very quickly. In that freezing cold, you hear the cracking of ice forming. And the rumbling of moving stone. What do you do? The cat got across the lake because the lake was frozen. Frozen, yeah. We have frozen the lake. That's how it got out without getting wet, without boat, without bridge. The lake was frozen. And a blue light fills the room over the frozen water, which is now completely safe to walk across the room. Oh, uh, should we look for something down? I I actually take the steps down and like put my feet Mm -hmm. a little bit on the ice. Yeah. Uh, It's a little slippy, but it's fine. I start skating across to, <laughs> I just want to look for any symbols, any doorways. Cool. Give me an investigation check. Mm. 15. The central bridge, underneath it, there's a loot handle hanging down. Oh. Huh. Guys, there's a handle down here. Pull it. <laughs> Don't pull it. Pull it. Um, Trust your gut. Should, oh, that is a rule. Should, Trust your gut. Uh, all right. And I pull it. <laughs> hey. You got me. <laughs> oh, yeah. I should leverage your rules against your warrant. That's so it. I thought maybe one of you no might because temptation. at least you can fly and you can crawl on walls. I got nothing if someone happens you're to the, this ass. You're the one on the ice. All right. As you pull the door. Oh, it's a door handle. The, yeah, the da- it's like a little hatch oh. of a little compartment that opens up. And inside the compartment, there is wrapped in cloth a thick book. Rudy? Uh, it's just a book. Oh. So it's not a kind of book. Do I, what does the title ra- say? It's it's wrapped in in a bit of cloth, and wrapping ar- around the cloth the the cloth, um, there is a perfectly cut delirium crystal as well. Oh, you say a book? A book and delirium, quite nicely cut, if I do say so myself. Whose temple is this, and why does it have delirium in it? May I see the book? I st- is that the only thing in there? Mm-hmm. I pick it out and I skate it across. <laughs> cool. There you go, Rap. Thank you. Open it up, but for all of us to see. Yes. Uh, I'll, uh, where do you want to gather? I think we should all be, yeah. Open it near the, I'm gonna open the, uh, Oh wait, could this be the relic? I open the book. You know that this is not what you were searching for, but it is a treasure nonetheless. 
Roll me a d6. Five. Five. This is a tome of leadership and influence. Oh. Hmm? Written in ancient language. Is, um, someone may take six, 48 hours over six days or fewer studying the book's contents to permanently increase their charisma score by two. I think I should. Re- no. What's your charisma? No, it's it's definitely wrath. Wrath. But wrath but um, gains so much from charisma. What do you have in charisma? Magic. This can raise you above twenty. Oh, can it? Oh wow. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty. Okay. Cool. Yeah, you definitely take it then. I don't know if there's a. But limit. but, but could it be, like, would it help with um? What's your charisma score? Don't worry about me. I think this is... What's your Christmas score? I think Sebastian should take that book. <laughs> <laughs> or um, 16. We, we're, we'll hang on to it, but this is a very rare item. I think regardless, it's going to make an impact on our team. Who's the greatest leader? It's well, probably well, me. <laughs> the other... The stone is an iron stone of agility. Or sorry, fortitude. Stone orbits your head. Your constitution score increases by two to a maximum of 20. These are great gifts. We still need to find your relic. Was there other compartments in the other rooms that we didn't even look in? And the f- cloth that the book is wrapped in is also a magic item. So I'm laying it out on this yeah. altar. It's a cloak of protection. Oh. Why do I feel like you should have all three? Uh, we, I think we all, I think there's a lot of opportunity. I think uh, if I were alone, I would steal it all. <laughs> I'm I'm already wearing a cloak, so I don't need the cloak. <laughs> My... I already have a really nice cloak. It adds to your AC. I mean, I wouldn't mind that. I but think we I should. Know yours is the I, most I think we should. We should. Uh, yeah, we, these are really cool. I personally think that my my charisma score is quite high. So I wouldn't be like devastated if I didn't. But it get... could be higher. It, yeah, could, it can always get higher. No, I uh, when I when I see an item that specifically says your most powerful thing can be more powerful, I say let the person like that's gonna up the damage of your eldritch blasts. Yeah. That's gonna up your saving it's throws good, on all good. of your spells. It's Literally good. everything that your character does <laughs> is better. What's what? the iron of stone of fortitude? I'm trying to figure it out. Uh, um, it is, if you look up the ion stones, it just yeah. increases your constitution score by, by two, two to, to a maximum of 20. 20. Oh, so you get more con? Yeah. And, uh, it, does it have an AC? Is that the idea that it covers? It orbits your head and technically they can be attacked, but you know, it's a, it's kind of a weird sort of thing. Okay. Well. And resistance Ru- to all damage. Rudy, do you have anything you're attuned to? Um, good question. Currently, currently it says no, but I, I don't. Your axe that. would require attunement. So I, I use it as like, really, I only have two slots left. I think, uh, Rudy, you could absolutely benefit from a, a stone of fortitude. Increase my con. Yeah, I think you should take the cloak and the. Cause, I mean, I don't oh. have any. I don't have any spots left. I don't have any spots left either. Like, oh, and so I, at least for now, without barring anything else, I think you should. And none of those items, off. I think, are better than my slippers and cloak. Uh, maybe the cloak. I know. I like the cloak is kind of cool, but uh, I know I'm gonna be. Re- I have a lot of reading to do, so. We, we can also assess. We can assess later, but I think for now, because I don't, ha- I, I don't have time to like unattune and reattune to things. I think it makes sense for Rudy to take the cloak and the stone if you, yeah, if we you can agree. Always, 
pass them off. I always like uh -huh. switch it up. Yeah. I mean, I can't, I don't have time to attune to it right now. Anyways, right? It takes time. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta you gotta take time to attune to it. Can I open the door? You open the door, and you are back in the hallway of the enemies and the allies. Hmm. I think I've solved our riddle. So we have come full, full circle round now. We this traveled, does not make any sense. We traveled in a straight path from the forest. We traveled through a door, ended up in the dais room. We traveled straight through and ended up in the river room. And now we're back where we started. Can I, I'm like, will you guys just follow me for a second and, and humor me for a moment? Yes. If I go back to the main library, mm -hmm. travel through the other double doors, mm -hmm. do I come to the room with the dais? You do. Coming into the room with the dais. And we're all going. Yeah. We're all following you. So I lead us back to the room with the dais. <laughs> and I'm looking around, I'm like, okay, hear me out. Three cats, correct? Mm. Walking in the same direction. But we're looking for a secret hidden relic in these ruins. Mm. The secret hidden relic is a mystery. It's in a room that we haven't found yet. It's hidden somewhere. The forest room was the only riddle that we couldn't solve in the room. The riddle had nothing to do with the room itself. The dais room, the riddle was solved in us solving the room. Mm. The river room, was solved in the room. The forest room, the answer was halfway. It is the second cat. Three rooms, three cats. If we're in the dais room and we travel back out the door we came in, we will go from the dais room to the forest room, traveling down the hall to the river room and back out the river room, traveling in the same direction Cat one, the dais room, has two cats behind it, the other two rooms. Cat two has a room in front of it and a room behind it. The third room has a room in front of it and a secret hidden room behind it. By traveling in a straight line from this dais room, we will find a hidden chamber. I believe you. Let's try it out. I can, I, I, yes, Wilhelm, please, please take me, take me to this. I must find this. Traveling from the dais room, I head back through the door that we originally entered through. Okay. Do I end up? Okay, so what, I need to know where you're going to start and... We start in the main room, right? The lobby? Where are you starting? We travel to the dais room first. Okay. From the lobby. So you go from the lobby to the dais room. Yeah. Okay. Then through this door, which I believe is the one we came out. Okay. And I travel through. Where do I end up? You end up in the garden room. From the garden room, I travel across, mm -hmm. through the door, down the hall, into the river. the river room. Walking across the river, through the back door there. As you open that door... It is, you feel another riddle from Bruce come into your mind. How does a cat stop time? I believe a cat that wishes to stop time would go to sleep. Any other thoughts? <laughs> oh, I like that one. <laughs> I thought that was a great answer. Um, I've, done so, I've done so well. I, I, I lay down. <laughs> Just everyone, we must sleep. How does a cat stop time? Is there a pun here? Cat nap. Cat nap. No. Hmm. A cat stops time by breaking the clock. <laughs> yeah. How does a cat stop time? 
That's it. That's the end. I think I know. And that's, it's, it's, we must sleep. For it's in our dreams that Bruce will show us. I mean, I'm not really good at just going to sleep on the spot. So. Well, we'll we'll set up a, a a little like staging area. Okay. You feel the words change. Oh. What does a cat use to stop time? It's not sleep. Jeez. I'm so sorry. Get it together. What does a cat use to stop time? I feel like if I close my eyes and squint really hard, the answer will come to me. A cat uses... What, what does a One cat... of its lives. No. No. What does a cat have? Claws. Use to stop time. Pause. Tail. <gasps> Pause. Pause. Why? Pause. Pause. <laughs> Pause. Pause. And with that, that is where we will press <laughs> pause until next week. <laughs> 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 But we still had like it was Raph trying to sleep for like twenty minutes. Like, just go to sleep. Just go to sleep. You're, you're like sleep. having a nap, and finally I'm like, pause. <laughs> and then like you wake up, and you're like, pause. <laughs> pause. Tail. I figured it out first. <laughs> it was. It was a big was... thank you to Jill, Kelly, and Joe for putting up with all my riddles <laughs> and solving them so easily, incredibly easily. And a huge thank you to Kyle for crying off camera at how bad we are at this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, re I'm really proud. And, yeah. and a huge thank you to our dungeon master, Monty Martin, yes. with all the riddles for his puzzle dungeon. Yeah, and the, and the, the shape and the mystery, and oh, so scary. Um, and a big thank you to um, all the incredible uh, assets produced by talented artists that we use in our live, uh, in our tabletop games. Uh, we have some amazing creators who uh, let us share our, uh, their work, and we encourage you to check out and support uh, these creators uh, in your own games, too. Uh, we have some amazing uh, stuff by Dwarven Forge um, from multiple different sets. Uh, awesome stuff. Uh, miniatures by Hero Forge and WizKids. Player character artwork by Elizabeth Perot. And music by Tabletop Audio. Of course, don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store. You can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dudes shirts. Check out bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. And a big thank you, as always, to our amazing Patreon supporters. They help make sure that we can keep doing all the great work that we do here on YouTube with our live play show and much, much more. If you enjoy the work that we do, please consider becoming a patron of our show by following the links down below. We also have a phenomenal Discord community exclusive for our patrons. So if you're joining us on our Patreon, make sure to hop onto the Discord where you can chat with all of us about all things D&D, TTRPG, Drakenheim, talk to us about our Kickstarters and all of our other projects, as well as joining in our monthly writer's room. We have one coming up tomorrow from when this is filmed, which is irrelevant. <laughs> um, <laughs> And we have our monthly Q&As as well. Uh, so you can join in on all of the fun in our Discord. And be sure to catch all the latest on our YouTube channel as well. Check us out there where you can find our guides for playing, playing TTRPGs, running the game, and much more. Be sure to join us next Tuesday when we broadcast the campaign on Twitch. You can check us out from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube or check us out as an audio-only podcast as well. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time in Drakenheim. <laughs>